Hello and welcome back to My Ultra Life. Last time we learned about the body mass index and the food pyramid. While there's still a lot of debate about the reliability of the BMI as a determination of the person's target body weight. If you're like me, when you check the BMI chart, you think the weight shown as normal is way too low. But some Asian researchers believe the BMI is too permissive. This means that the BMI chart for an Asian might show a higher weight than the normal target weight. There's a lot of debate about the validity of BMI, but it goes both ways. BMI doesn't work well for athletes and bodybuilders who may have more muscle mass than fat. Now this guy's probably an extreme example. Or the elderly who may have a higher degree of fat than muscle. Who came up with a BMI anyway? Well, the body mass index was created by Adolf Quetet, a Belgian statistician in 1870. What? That's over 200 years ago. There's gotta be some other accurate measurement to determine optimal body weight. Well, there are other messages such as the uh, skin fold test using calipers, the underwater weighing test, and computerized tomography. All these methods have their trade-offs and generally require some specialized technicians and expensive equipment. So while the BMI may not be the most accurate for every individual, it does give a quick guideline and is easily calculated. You don't need to have someone pinch you or dunk you in a tank or go to a hospital to tell you that you're fat. And it's pretty easy math too. The BMI equals weight in pounds times 703 divided by height in inches times height in inches. My weight's about 212 pounds and I'm a hair under six feet or 72 inches tall. So it's 212 pounds times 703 times 72 times 72, or 149,036 divided by 5184, giving me a BMI of 29.75. And if you're not a math whiz, don't worry. There are lots of websites that provide BMI calculators. I'll provide some links in the text portion of this article. So while the BMI may not be the most reliable method for everybody to determine if you're obese or at a normal weight, it's the simplest, most inexpensive way to administer the test and give a guideline for most people. But there is another measurement that may be more important as a determination of heart risk and diabetes. It's called the waist to hip ratio. You can easily measure your hips and waist to find out how you rate. The, the measurement is quite simple. While undressed, with a tape measure, measure your waist circumference. Place a tape just above your belly button. Then, measure your hips, placing the tape around the largest area of your hips, usually the widest part of your buttocks. The waist to hip ratio is waist circumference divided by hip circumference. Even easier math. For men, a ratio of 0.9 or less is considered safe, and for women, a ratio of 0.8 is considered safe. If you have a waist, a waist to hip ratio of one or more, it's considered at risk for heart disease and other health issues related to being overweight for both men and women. So now it's time to get rid of that pot belly. Use the waist to hip ratio and BMI in combination to determine your healthy body weight. Once you determine a weight goal, set up a plan for yourself. The plan should include healthy eating and lots of exercise, stressing cardio to burn fat, and resistance training to build muscle. Your plan should include participating in a couple of athletic events like a 10K run or a bike riding event. Set a reasonable time goal. It took months or even years to get this fat. It'll take months to get back in shape. Set intermediate weight goals so you have short-term goals along the way onto your target weight. Watch what you eat, get out, get some exercise, and live your ultra life.